Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So we have some more information coming out about Crisis Core, Final Fantasy VII, whether or not this is a remake or a remaster, and some people who purchased movies on the PlayStation Store are going to lose access to them. We have those topics and more to cover, but before we get started, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so we can keep you up to date with all the latest gaming news. Now let's get started. First we have this article here from IGN, Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII won't feature new story elements, but that doesn't mean it's a basic remaster. So the producer Mariko Sato spoke with IGN about this remaster and I've seen some debates of whether this is a remaster or a remake and in the article here he's quoted saying various improvements have been made to nearly all other scenes and battles to a point where it could be said that the work we are doing is akin to creating a remake. However, as the core elements such as the story are grounded in the original work, we call it a remaster. Now this kind of reminds me of how we had the Wii version of Xenoblade Chronicles and that was ported to the Switch and assets were updated. Obviously this is a different company, but the preview we've seen looks really good. Now the PC version is going to target 120 frames per second and of course that's going to depend on your PC while the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S versions will be 60 frames per second. As for the Switch version, Sato did say that there would be differences in resolution and frames per second but he did not elaborate beyond that. And while the story elements are the same, it looks like the battle system is getting updated. The article adds, It's apparent that Crisis Core will be a substantial update indeed. In addition to overhauled graphics, Crisis Core will be fully voiced while also featuring a newly arranged soundtrack. The gameplay is also getting an update with Zack's attack combos now being linkable and limit breaks being accessible at any time, not just when they pop up in the game slot machine, known as the Digital Mindwave System or DMW. The DMW for its part will remain largely the same, meaning that elements such as leveling will remain random as ever. And I'm definitely looking forward to this. I never played the original one on the PSP because I didn't own a PSP. So this is a great time to go back and revisit what a lot of people call one of the best Final Fantasy games. Next we have an interesting story coming from Flat Panels HD. PlayStation Store will remove customers purchased movies. In a move that will undoubtedly draw severe criticism, movies from Studio Canal that customers have purchased on the PlayStation Store will be completely removed next month. The legal notice is published on PlayStation's German and Austrian websites where it reads, As of August 31st, 2022, Due to our evolving licensing agreements with content providers, you will no longer be able to view your previously purchased Studio Canal contents and it will be removed from your video library. We greatly appreciate your continued support. Thank you, PlayStation Store. Now for a little backstory on this, it was back in August 31st of last year that Sony announced that the PlayStation Store would no longer offer new movie purchases or rentals on PS4 and PS5s. Now at that time, Sony assured its customers that users can still access movie and TV content that they have purchased through PlayStation Store for on-demand playback on their PS4, PS5, and mobile devices after August of 2021. Now there's no mention of this happening anywhere else and I really don't know if this is a commonplace occurrence in Germany or Austria but this does give me concern that they would revoke access to something that you paid for and as far as I know not offer a refund. Could they do something like this to digital games that maybe they've lost a licensing to? 
Generally, as I've always seen it, once you purchase a digital copy of a movie, say from a place like Vudu or iTunes, you've got that in your library even if they stop selling it. But this just reinforces my love for physical media, especially when it comes to games, movies, and even music. Next, it looks like we're getting a return of E3. This headline here from Variety.com, E3 sets return to LA in 2023 after a three-year hiatus. Now, E3 was canceled in 2020 because of the pandemic, and it was virtual in 2021, and then this past year it was completely canceled. Now, even before the pandemic hit, we were hearing rumblings of E3 having financial troubles, but nothing concrete. But it looks like they've worked to resolve this issue with a partnership. This article says, The Entertainment Software Association, the trade group that runs the convention, also announced a partnership to produce E3 2023 with ReadPop. The event production company behind PAX, New York Comic Con, Star Wars Celebration, and others. Now as far as I know, it looks like E3 is set to reopen to the general public. E3 2023 will welcome back publishers, developers, journalists, content creators, manufacturers, buyers, I guess that's us, and licensors. In addition, the event will feature digital showcases and in-person consumer components. ESA and announcing the return of E3 to LA hyped next year's event as a week of titanic AAA reveals, earth-shaking world premieres, and exclusive access to the future of video games. Now the ESA has announced this for the second week of June and media registration will begin in late 2022. Now, I've never been able to make it to an E3. Most of what I've seen in there is standing in line for three or four hours to play just a few minutes of a game, and that doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun to me. But perhaps if they're partnering with the company that runs PAX and New York Comic Con, they may be able to handle this a little better. But let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think this is a good partnership? Do you think it can make E3 better? Or does something like this just really need to discontinue and switch completely to digital? Next, we have a small update to the PS5 firmware. And this article here at VGC says the latest PS5 system update adds auto low latency mode settings. Now, auto low latency mode or ALLM lets a game console, PC, or other device send a signal to the display which will cause it to automatically switch to a low latency, low lag mode for gaming. Now if you don't have this feature, you would have to set this on your TV manually and it's usually turned on by the game mode. But if your TV has this, you can turn this on on your PS5 under settings, screen and video, video output, and then ALLM. And I was kind of surprised how many people don't know that you need to go into your TV and put the TV type into game mode in order to get low latency. It's usually written in the manual, but most people don't read that. And then finally, we have the latest Famitsu sales coming out of Japan. Over on the software side, we have a new entry with Monster Hunter Rise plus Sunbreak, and this is the DLC that was just released. And then we have Nintendo Switch Sports, followed by Fire Emblem Warriors, Three Hopes, and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, Gran Turismo 7, which is seeing a little bit of a resurgence. And then we have Demon Slayer, followed by Minecraft, Ring Fit Adventure, and then finally in last place, Mario Strikers Battle League. So I'd have to guess that Super Smash Bros. probably just nudged out into like number 11 or 12 with this resurgence of Gran Turismo 7. I'm guessing maybe there might have been a sale on that game in Japan. But then over on the hardware side, we have the Switch systems in the top three spots, followed by the PlayStation 5, then the Xbox Series X actually ahead of the S version this time, with the PlayStation 5 digital between them. And then we have a few more people that needed replacements for their new 2DSL and their PlayStation 4. 
and I'll be interested to see what happens in the coming weeks with the sales of the Switch OLED model if we'll have some people kind of waiting out for that Splatoon 3 version. And that's all we have for today. Did anything we cover catch your attention? Are you looking forward to Crisis Core and does the trailer look good to you? And have you ever went to an E3 or have you ever wanted to go to E3? Make sure to drop a comment below about those topics or anything else we covered today. I want to thank you for watching, have a great weekend, and be good.